Hello, I'd like to spend a few minutes exploring the title of the course, The Practice of Authentic Allyship with You. You have probably heard many names for what we're going to explore in this course. How do we stand with each other when the rights of some are being denied? How do we center on one another when we need it? Many names are used. Allyship, accomplice, accompaniment, solidarity, among others. Each name has strengths and weaknesses. The reason why we have so many names for the same thing is that people often claim to be allies without actually centering on those who are in need of allies. We'll get more into that as the course goes on with videos from our partners. We have chosen our title, The Practice of Authentic Allyship, because each word carries an important meaning that contributes to the whole. First, let's consider the word practice. Practice is about action. We do not think that we are allies. Allyship is not about our being or identity. Allyship is something we do because we have found our common identity as human beings, because we are a part of one another. Second, practice is never perfect. It is complex to center on people being dehumanized or oppressed in some way. We can respond effectively in one situation and find that the same thing is ineffective in another. At our best, we all have a batting average. Allies learn from our mistakes, accept failure as a part of allyship, and try again. Next, Practice includes guided preparation. To do any complex thing, we must spend time studying, thinking, and experimenting in safe spaces. It means asking for feedback about how effective our actions and words are, and taking that feedback to heart. Next, let's think about the word authentic. Authenticity is being true to you. Allyship includes understanding and being able to share our story and our values that lead us to center on those experiencing oppression. Gaining clarity about our why can power our allyship for the long term. Being true to ourselves means to recognize where we fit in the caste system and how we benefit from it, and also how we experience pain from it. Authenticity is being true to those we stand with. Allyship is about centering on people who may not always be fully recognized as fully human. Our work as allies can help them in their struggle to be recognized and respected for who they are. To do this, we must be in relationship with them, to know what they're up against, and to have compassion for their situation. Authenticity is also about being willing to change. Because we operate from our why and our values, we are free to recognize when we are behaving in ways that are not in alignment with our shared values. Changing our behaviors and attitudes is not about becoming someone else. It is to become more of who we can be and who we want to be. Lastly, let's talk about allyship itself. Allyship includes following well. Allyship is not about us. It's not about our feelings, our worth, or our purity. We are joining another struggle for human rights. Like, if I join your volleyball team, you will want me to learn your plays and to understand your competitors. The people most impacted by a problem are the best ones to define it and decide how to respond. We may have something to contribute to these strategies later on. But first, we must understand both the pressures the group is under and how they are responding to those pressures, and then play our specific role in their work for their human rights. Allyship includes leadership within your in-group. There are people who will listen to you when they simply cannot hear from someone from an oppressed group. To be an effective ally, we need to remain a committed part of our in-groups and 
relate to an oppressed group. Some in your in-group will try to minimize or exclude you because of your relationship with an out-group. Be prepared to call your in-group to live its shared values and let them know you are relating to this feared group because of those values. Keep showing up in both groups. Allyship is working for a more just world for all. Because our destinies are bound up with one another, allyship of an oppressed group can help us lead to a day when human rights are universally respected. We will all benefit from that. We know that this is not a perfect title. It alone cannot defend against people barging into a community's work for their own liberation and trying to take over. Yes, this happens all too often, in fact. If we were to use one word, we would probably use accompaniment or perhaps solidarity. But those aren't always common terms. Allyship is the most common word, and we wanted to start there. But these three words together can help guide our actions as allies, so that we center on one another when we are in need of support. We look forward to learning more with you, and thank you for being part of our course.